Hi, this is Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, right back here on Wager Talk TV with your NFL Fade the Public video for the final week of the regular season, week 18. First time in history we've said it's week 18 of the regular season. I'm going to tell you the most public sides and totals for both Saturday and Sunday. I've got some Saturday plays and also Sunday, of course, for you. Week 18, that's Saturday, January 8th, and more importantly, Sunday, January 9th, right here on Wager Talk TV. Get into that in just a moment. Hey, quick reminder, if you want my official best bets each and every day, they're available right now on my personal page at wagertalk.com. Steve Merrill, two R's, one L. And don't forget, college basketball is in full swing, and you better pay attention. Each of the past two years combined, I've been the number one basketball handicapper in college hoops at wagertalk.com. I know we're talking NFL pro football here. I know we've got the college football national championship game on Monday. But don't forget, there's a ton of basketball, both college and pro every day. I'm the number one ranked college basketball capper the past two years combined. Win percentage and net units won at wagertalk.com. And I've got a very special offer for you. If you've been trying, thinking about trying out basketball, we all know you play football. That's watching your, why you're watching this NFL Fade the Public video. But if you're thinking about playing basketball, now's the time to do it. I've got a very special offer. Normally, one day of best bets, all sports is $39. Two days, that'd be $78. I'm going to give you seven days for just $69. That's right. Instead of paying $39 for just one day, get seven days for just $30 more. That's $69 for a full seven days and nights of all sports. That's every NFL play this week, the college football national championship game Monday between Georgia and Alabama. Of course, all of my NBA best bets every day. And most importantly, my number one ranked college basketball for the next seven days and nights as well. Everything for just $69, but you must have promo code Merrill7. M-E-R-R-I-L-7. Merrill 7 gets you the next seven days of all sports for just $69. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Let's get to the most public plays in the NFL this week. I've got three of them for Sunday, January 9th. But first, I want to quickly touch on the Saturday games. I know many of you are joining me here on Saturday before these games kick off. Hey, if you're joining us late Saturday night or Sunday, feel free to skip over this part or take a quick listen. I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but... First game at 4.30 Eastern Saturday, Kansas City Chiefs are looking pretty public, minus the 10.5. So the Chiefs do qualify as a public side on Saturday afternoon, minus 10.5. Kansas City is still playing for the number one seed. Denver has been eliminated from the playoffs. So not a surprise that the public is jumping on board at Chiefs. But be careful. A lot of times these teams that have nothing to play for, quote-unquote, still show up in the final week. Uh, but the public has taken the Chiefs pretty hard here. After that big game against Cincy last week, they have to turn now and play in the thin air and altitude on Saturday afternoon. Kansas City minus 10.5, a pretty public side on Saturday afternoon. The late game Saturday night at 8.15 Eastern, Dallas Cowboys, Philadelphia Eagles. Not too much on the side here, but the total is looking pretty public. I know we don't talk a lot about totals, but the over 43 is looking like one of the most public overplays this week. Uh, so keep an eye on that. Dallas, Philly, over 43 looking very public on Saturday night. By the way, Cowboys have clinched uh, the NFC East. Philadelphia has clinched a wild card. Uh, teams could move up a little bit with wins, so they might play their starters, might not play them full amount. They don't have a lot to gain, but they could change their positioning a little bit. Let's look at Sunday, though. we got three very public plays for Sunday in the NFL. Um, most public game of the week goes at 4 o'clock Eastern, so let me give you that one first, and then we'll circle back around to an early game. Also, ding, 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 a public underdog on Sunday as well. But let's look at the most public play this week. And first of all, just a quick disclaimer, this is week 18 of the NFL, it used to be week 17, it's the final regular season week, that's what matters, and a lot of these teams, or some of them are resting players, right? Um, the Packers have everything wrapped up, uh, they have the number one seed clinched in the NFC, so they get the bye, um, they're the only team that has nothing to play for as far as playoff teams. As I mentioned, there's a lot of teams that have clinched divisions, like Dallas, for example, um, teams that have clinched nothing better than a wild card, like Philly, as I mentioned, that Saturday game. All the other teams could improve their playoff seeding but not sure that matters to them one way or the other. The divisional winners all host, of course, a playoff game next week. And uh, that actually takes place in this most public play this week, and that's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Game goes at 425 Eastern Sunday afternoon. Tampa Bay Buccaneers minus eight are the most public side this week in week 18 of the NFL. Now, Tampa Bay is one of those teams that has clinched the division. They really don't have much to improve. They could maybe move their seeding or their playoff matchup one spot one way or the other based on who they play, but other teams have to win or lose. So there's a lot of moving parts here. It does look like Tampa might rest some starters, and that's why this line is much lower than the look-ahead line. In fact, the advanced look-ahead line a week ago before the games played in Week 17 was going to be Tampa Bay minus 16.5 against Carolina. Now it's only 8. Um, so obviously the fact that this is not a must win for the Bucs is priced in the line. Tampa has already clinched 
of the division. Tom Brady is expected to start here. Uh, one thing I'll say about week, the final week of the regular season, it's a lot like handicapping the preseason before the season begins. We've kind of come full circle uh, all the way back to handicapping like we were in August with the preseason. You have to read between the lines, figure out the coach's motivation, their game plan, and most importantly, how long the starters are going to play in the quarterback rotation. As we head into the weekend, Tom Brady's expected to start. Uh, whether he goes the full game or not, we will see. Tampa, once again, does not have much to play for. They've locked up the division, um, currently minus eight. But Tampa Bay, a very public side against the Carolina Panthers, who have really struggled. And I, once again, you know, as I always say in this video, it's not necessarily that the public is playing on one team. It's that they often do not want to play the other team. And I think this is a textbook example of that. Um, the public might be back in Tampa. They're a very public team, obviously. Tom Brady defending Super Bowl champs. Um, and last week, they were a very public play against the uh, the New York Jets, and they came up flat in that game. We're lucky to even win outright as a two-touchdown favorite. Uh, the week before that, uh, they were a very public te a play against this very same Carolina Panther team. So it's the uh, third week in a row that Tampa Bay has made this video. They didn't cover last week, but of course, two weeks ago, they won easy for the public against this exact same Carolina team, 32-6. So I think that's one reason the Carolina Panthers are getting faded this week. And, of course, the biggest reason is Carolina is just terrible right now. They're 0-6 straight up and, more importantly, against the spread the last six weeks. They have failed to win or cover each of their last six games. So, obviously, the public wants nothing to do with them. So, not a surprise that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers minus eight, the most public play for the final week of the regular season, week 18. That's a late game. Goes at 425 Eastern. Not sure why they wanted to flex this one into the late card. Uh, I guess because Tom Brady might play. But Tampa Bay Buccaneers minus the eight, the most public play this week in the NFL. <clears throat> Two other public plays for Sunday. I'm going to look at the public underdog last because it's a late game as well. First, though, let's circle back to the 1 o'clock Eastern card. The most public play on the early card Sunday at 1 o'clock Eastern is a little bit surprising to me, the Washington football team. Uh, Washington was eliminated from the playoffs. They had slim chances going into last week. Uh, they played tough against the Eagles, had an early lead in that game, uh, but ended up losing 20-16, to their fourth straight loss in four weeks, and they're now officially eliminated. Uh, the public doesn't care, though. They're backing the Washington football team minus seven. Uh, by the way, they announced that beginning of February, they will have an official new nickname. They eliminated Red Wolves. So now it's down to seven possibilities. Of course, my personal choice, the Red Hogs, I think it makes a lot of sense. Although I personally be okay with anything other than football team. I think football team is the most ridiculous, generic uh, nickname I've ever heard. Did have a leak, though, a couple days ago. And some media sources reported that the Admirals website has been linked to the football team website. And the New Jersey has three stars on the sleeve. So there's some rumblings that it's going to be the Washington Admirals. Hey, let me know in the comments below what you think of that new nickname. If that's your choice, what your preference would be. Uh, Red Hogs is mine. Football team is still in the running. Admirals is apparently the inside information. Commanders, Defenders, Brigade, Armada, I think was the other one. Presidents. Those are the ones that are on the running still. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Let's get back to this game. A Washington football team, despite being eliminated from the postseason, despite four straight losses, despite scoring 17 or less points in five of their six last games, are still a very public side at 1 o'clock Eastern Sunday. And it's more so, once again, public isn't necessarily liking Washington. They're just fading the New York Giants. And it's hard to disagree. The Giants are awful. You know, the Washington football team might be bad offensively. The Giants are even worse. They've now lost five straight up and against the spread in a row. Uh, they have scored nine or ten points or less in four of those last five losses. They've now scored uh, 13 points or less in six of their last seven games. Jake Fromm is going to make his second start ever. He did not play last week. They went back to Glennon, Mike Glennon, who was terrible in that game against Philadelphia. Uh, the Giants had absolutely no passing attack. In fact, uh, he was 4 for 11 passing, and when he factored in the sacks, they were negative 10 in net passing yards for the game. Uh, did get some ground game going, 161 rushing yards last week against the Eagles. They actually outrushed the Eagles, I'm sorry, the Bears. They outrushed the Bears last week, 161 to 87, but still lost 29-3. Of course, the Eagle game I was referencing was two weeks ago, and that is when Fromm made his first start. Uh, he did not do very well in that game. In fact, the reason Glennon played last week is because Fromm was just terrible against the Eagles two weeks ago. Um, in that game, Jake Fromm was 6 for 17, passing for 25 total yards. He had a quarterback rating of 19, and he averaged 1.5 yards per pass attempt. 1.5 yards per pass attempt. I mean, you and I could hand the ball off to each other and fall forward and average 2 yards of rushing play. Uh, should never have more rushing yards averaged than passing yards, and that's basically where the Giants have been the last two weeks. They're going back to Jake Fromm here, 
And uh, once again, hard for me to make a case for the Giants. They have had a lot of turnover problems. They've had 12 turnovers those last th four games. Uh, but once again, a lot of interceptions. Two bad quarterbacks. Not a coincidence, right? But the Washington football team is one of the worst pass defenses in the NFL. So we'll see if maybe the Giants get the passing game going. Um, hard to imagine that um, the public likes the Giants here. So not a surprise they're fading them. But once again, the public is on the Washington football team. A team that's lost four straight and is now laying seven points in a meaningless game on the road. I found that one pretty interesting. That goes at 1 o'clock Eastern. One more public play for Sunday, and it's one of those dreaded public underdogs. I'm going to get that to give that to you here in just a moment. Quick reminder, though, I know we're talking NFL pro football. Don't forget, though, four major sports are still going. It's a great time of year to be an all-sports client. We've got the national championship game in college football for this Monday night. Don't forget, $9 Monday. You can get my personal best bet in the Georgia-Alabama game for just $9 on my page at wagertalk.com. $9 Monday. I often put those plays up earlier on the weekend, and you can take advantage. So check the weekend page, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, if you want that advanced college football best bet. But most importantly, don't forget about basketball. It's a daily sport. It's the best money maker you're going to have right now because there's a ton of games each and every day. And most importantly, I'm number one ranked college basketball handicapper the past two years combined at wagertalk.com. If you've been thinking about trying college basketball, think no longer because I'm giving you too good of a deal to pass up. Hey, look, if you were to buy Sunday's NFL card only, one day is $39. Get seven days for just $69, just $30 more. $69 gets you the next seven days and nights. And it's not just football, it's basketball as well. College and pro football, every NFL game for this sun Saturday and Sunday. And, of course, the College Football Championship Monday. But you also get seven days of the NBA and seven days of my number one ranked college basketball for one price. You pay $69 for seven full days and nights. But you've got to have the promo code Merrill7. M-E-R-R-I-L, two R's, one L, Merrill7. M-E-R-R-I-L-7, the number seven. Merrill7, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Gets you seven days and nights, all sports. For a ridiculously low $69. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Merrill7, you must have that promo code. Hey, let's get to the most public underdog for week 18, final week of the NFL regular season. And it goes Sunday, also a late game at 4 o'clock Eastern. And that's going to be the New York Jets. Wow, who would have thought the public could be back in the New York Jets, right? But the Jets have now covered three straight, and the public is taking notice. You know, I mentioned earlier, last week the public faded the Jets. They were on the Tampa Bay Bucks. Jets almost won that game outright, only lost 28-24 late as a two-touchdown dog. Well, the Jets are now getting some public love this week, and the public is fading the Buffalo Bills, which is quite interesting because Buffalo has actually not failed to cover the last three games either. 3-0 uh, straight up, 2-0 with a push. Depending on the closing line last week, the Atlanta game landed right on 14, but Bills aren't doing anything wrong. They haven't failed to cover in three straight weeks either, uh, but the public is back in the Jets here. Now, of course, the Jets eliminated from the playoffs. That basically was at the beginning of the season. They were basically eliminated from the playoffs. But Buffalo does have something to play for. In fact, uh, the Bills need to win here to wrap up uh, the divisional title and get a home game next week. And uh, they don't have to win, actually. New England loses, um, then Buffalo would still win the division. If New England loses, is almost a touchdown favorite at Miami. There's only about a there's a 70% chance New England wins that game. So there's only about a 30% chance uh, that Miami pulls the upset, which means Buffalo will need to win this game to wrap up the AFC East. Um, however, they cannot get the number one seed. All they can do is win the division. Uh, so laying more than two touchdowns could be a little dicey, and I think that's why the public, maybe doing their homework, realizes that, and that's why they're back in the Jets here. So although Buffalo does need to win to ensure the divisional title, um, it's, not a, it's not a necessity. And uh, to win by more than two touchdowns with a playoff game on deck next week, I could see them calling off the dogs maybe a little bit in the fourth quarter with a big lead. And the Jets, once again, more importantly, have been competitive uh, the last few weeks. Three straight covers despite only winning one of those games. Uh, their losses came by just seven and four points in the other two games. So the public likes the New York Jets this week. And keep in mind, two weeks ago, last week they faded them with the Bucks and lost. Two weeks ago they used the Jets against Jacksonville right here on this video, and they won. So the public did do well at the Jets a couple weeks ago. And for the second time in three weeks, one of the most public plays is the New York Jets. Who would have thought we'd be saying that just a couple months ago? Uh, once again, the Jets are the most public underdog this week, week 18 of the NFL. Uh, Jets are currently plus 16. The look-ahead line a week ago was going to be 17. So it has come off of that key number uh, from 17 down to 16. Once again, New York Jets plus 16, getting some public love as an underdog at 425 Eastern on Sunday. Hey, hope you found this video useful. As always, I do plan on coming back next week and each week of the NFL playoffs 
for some more fade the public information. We'll dig deep into all the playoff games, both sides and totals for you. Hey, also check out Wager Talk TV. I might have a Georgia-Alabama preview for you with some public information. If I get enough public info for that game, I'll post it here this weekend as well. It's just another reason to subscribe to Wager Talk TV. Hey, click that subscribe button. We're getting ever so close to 100,000 subscribers. Thank each and every one of you for your support and patronage, and most importantly, for viewing and commenting on these videos. We love the support. That's why we do the work. That's why we make these videos for you. And also, give it a thumbs up. Give it a like if you found it useful. But once again, if you want instant alerts when these Fade the Public videos are up, or if I make a college video for the championship game, Click the bell. The bell will let you know instantly when I post the next video here on Wager Talk TV. So once again, subscribe, click the bell, thumbs up, like, and most importantly, leave me comments below. You all know I love my comments. I read each and every one of them. I reply back. I want to know who you think the most public plays should be this week, which ones you agree or disagree with, and who you like this week in the NFL at week 18. And also let me know. How do you handicap this? Do you kind of read between the lines like it's a preseason game? Do you tread lightly or do you come in full throttle getting ready for the playoffs? Comment below. Let me know your thoughts for Saturday and Sunday's NFL action. And be sure to check back each and every day right here on Wager Talk TV for more information on this fantastic YouTube channel. Hey, don't forget, if you want to try out college basketball, number, number my number one ranked college hoops, now's a great time to do it. Get the next seven days and nights of basketball and football, all sports, for just $69 with promo code Merrill 7 M-E-R-R-I-L-7, Merrill 7, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Thanks for watching. Best of luck. I'll talk to you again soon right here on Wager Talk TV.